Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Update News. Today's top stories are unexpected new features and misinformation. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a jam-packed episode today, so make sure you stay until the very end to get all of the latest news. Sorry everyone, I've had to stop this video because this video was actually already made. I've had to go back into it because some breaking new developments have just happened that could not wait until tomorrow. Mr. Murray has literally just posted the brand new emoji for the update. Breaking news, it's happening. The update is happening. Hype train, hype train, hype train. The update is the Amiga symbol and it is absolutely glorious. The entire community is in a frenzy. But when can we expect the update? Well, it can literally be today, tomorrow, or indeed the 14th. But as we know right now, the update has an emoji drop. Very, very, very exciting stuff. But as always, there's nothing else to report on top of that. So let's get on to today's video. And I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who has been pressing that subscribe button as of late. And also, also those who have been double checking and signing off in the comments saying that they are still subscribed. The reason being is YouTube went through another culling cycle not too long ago and essentially what that means is they was unsubscribing you the viewer from your favorite YouTubers without your knowledge or your consent. So please make sure that you are still subscribed and if you're not subscribed and if you've been watching me for a while and you like what I do here then why not consider hitting that subscribe button. Also don't forget to leave a like on this very video it really does help me out as a channel but it also helps the information that i have in today's video get out there to the wider youtube audience so let's get into today's video so onwards to our first top story of the day misinformation now what do i mean by misinformation well i received this communique from mr captain of the steve's excellent channel i'll link his channel in the video description down below go and show him some love and he sent over this that he had from a viewer and the comment reads, no one seems to have mentioned that the space station override terminal at the back of the space station is active since the experimental update. Loving this update and your coverage of it, Captain. And then Captain put, I don't have a station override to test it with, with my PC save, Dan. So that's when the mighty, the majestic captain of the Steves got in contact with myself, outsourcing this problem to me and for me to go and have a look. And he left me this wonderful, wonderful message. Professor Cynical, I have a mission for you if you wish to accept it, sir. So yes, I'm going to be sending you over a comment from one of my videos. It says something rather curious. It says that the station overrides are now active inside of the PC experimental branch. Well, my PC save is too early, and I don't have any station overrides. I'm hoping you do, sir. Can you go and test it? Video your experience? Put it out there on the tinter webs. So, Captain Steve, I humbly accept this mission. So let's go over to the space station and have a look at the space station core. Welcome to the Space Station Core, ladies and gentlemen. As we all know by now, the console behind me requires one of two things, either a passport or a station override. A station override hasn't worked as of yet. You just get some funky messages, but nothing else happens, and you end up losing your station override. Now, the overrides themselves are a little bit more trickier to get these days, but I still have some laying about thanks to my godly duplication methods. So let's go and double check whether or not this comment is in fact right. So here we go, let's put in the override code and we still get the message of counterfeit code detected, glass, glass, glass. Now, unless this chap somehow had something happen in his game and it glitched out and it showed him something that no one's ever seen before, then as far as my testing can conclude that this is in fact still not working as intended. So my idea was you put that in and maybe it unveils the brand new space stations that we've seen in the trailer. However, However, that doesn't seem to be happening in the game at the moment, at least for my testing. And just for full clarity as well, this version that you're seeing right now of the game is the latest experimental branch version with the latest update. So this is the very latest version of the game that you're seeing right now. So I'm hoping if the guy found something that nobody else has, then he can maybe upload a video or give us a step-by-step -step instruction on how he's done something that 
we're not able to see at the moment. I hope that makes sense. Now, ladies and gentlemen, onwards to the next part of today's top stories, which is unexpected new features in No Man's Sky. Well, it turns out this is very unexpected, but rather goddamn juicy. So it turns out you are able now to get your very own fully functioning Dreadnought Freighters. So what is a Dreadnought Freighter? Well, as we all know, these big behemoths are the ones that you find in pirate galaxies and essentially they shoot the living mother lord out of anything that they see. They have massive cannons, massive guns, and until late, the only thing that you could do is destroy them and get some nice quirks. Not anymore, and I'm going to show you exactly how to capture one. Now, since the last update, I'm going to leave this bit of footage in. Since the last update, they now come with a warping time. So that means you need to disable the warp drives within 30 seconds. Otherwise, the Dreadnought will just flee the scene and you'll have to go out and find a new one. Now, I'm just going to leave this in just to show you what exactly happens. I've taken down the shields just about and before I could get around for the next volley, the Dreadnought disappeared. So, this is what you do instead. When you locate a Dreadnought for the first time, go towards the back of the ship and you want to shoot off all four of the ship engines. What this will allow you to do is completely disable that warping function and that is the very first thing you need to do. As you can see, it's going to start warping but you just absolutely crack open every single one of these engines and the warping will be immediately disabled. Then what we need to do is take down the shields. Now, as we start taking down these shields, as you can see, they're in a line and then the next bay as well, there's also another line, as we all know. But wait about because what will happen is, after a few seconds, a fuel rod will pop out from the bottom console. Destroy those as well. Because once you do and you take care of every single shield and fuel rod, the Dreadnought, believe it or not, gives up. And it'll invite you to go ahead and board its ship. Now, the entrance to the freighter is in a not normal place. It's actually located more towards the front of the freighter itself. But once you defeat the freighter and it wants you to board to negotiate terms, that's when you'll have access to the landing bay. Prior to that, those doors will be closed. So this works just like a normal freighter. You'll go all the way up to the top and you'll meet the captain, where then you can actually go ahead and purchase that freighter for a fee. And it acts like a normal freighter, except from it's a freighter with a lot of firepower. So to put it through a few different tests, I went to a completely new system with my new Pirate Dreadnought as my own personal freighter. And then I'm going to call it in to see if it does indeed act like any freighter that you would normally buy in the game. So here we go. We're just going to go ahead, summon the freighter and look at that. It works no problems. So that's very, very exciting. So let's go ahead and land and see what customization options we now have. So of course you can customize the appearance and you can choose any color of the rainbow. However, this doesn't seem to work right now. Even though we have it in the game where you can pick different colors, different patterns, it still doesn't actually change. And I'll show you that in just a second. But what does change is the engines at the back. We even have gravity drives and they do look pretty sick on a behemoth like this. But let's jump into our ship first of all. Let's fly out, go into camera mode and check whether or not our new color scheme has taken place. Now I have changed the color scheme for this uh, behemoth to all blue as that is probably the most easiest way to recognize a color change because otherwise it's black and red. And just as suspected, it looks exactly the same. So the color change in mechanics right now does not work. But again, this game is still an experimental. So I'm sure that this will be patched before public release. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know in the comment section down below. Will you be going for your own personal pirate dreadnought as your own personal freighter? I mean, that sounds like a pretty sick deal if you ask me. More guns, more firepower, more protection. And also, let me know what you think about about the other top story today about the space station override being used in the space station core. Have you gotten it to work? Let me know your comments in the comment section down below. And as always, my name is Professor Cynical, and I'll catch you all again in the next one. Bye for now.